studio on the road. We're live at Jan's house in Nashville right now with Dave Haas. Dave, it's wonderful to see you. Tim, it's wonderful to see you too, man. Thanks for doing this. Thanks yeah. for having us, man. I, I feel like uh, this is our third paste session, so yeah. we're old pals and when you're at the helm, we feel very comfortable, so it's, it's oh, good to be man. here. <laughs> I'm putting that on my website, or maybe I'm going to make a t-shirt that says that Dave Haas said that. So Okay. <laughs> Amazing. Amazing. We'll man. only take half. It's, it's <laughs> <laughs> 15. Would you take 15? 15 Okay, All done. Right. Um, we're about to hear a lot of your music today. All of it's brand new. Three of them are from Blood Harmony, which is in pre-order right now. Congratulations in advance, because that comes out on October 21st. Thanks, we're man. We're going to hear a brand, brand new one that's even newer than the Blood Harmony tunes as well. Uh, what do you guys feel like doing first? Let's start it off with uh, Sandy Sheets. That was the first um, single that we released when we announced the record. Thank you. 
There's people in this forest. Yeah, yeah, dude. And there's a mockingbird right on time. There's some cicadas. Yeah, yeah. Beautiful. This we're going to make cool. an adjustment right here um, yeah, while we're chatting. House. And then... Let's see, should, it should be back right now, maybe? What's Dave, that? Uh, we're just making a, a mic adjustment right now to make sure that we still got you. Hey, now. Check, check, check. One, two. Um, while we're chatting... Could we maybe, let's see, could you guys maybe split the difference on Tim's vocal mic in between Dave and, and uh, Tim while we chat, just so that we can hear both of you guys? Oh, sure. Okay. So, yeah, no, it's fine. Is it all good? Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm making some nothing into something. <laughs> Disregard everything. Um, all right. Uh, so, <laughs> easy. Uh, Blood <laughs> Harmony is a, it's a wonderful and... Um, descriptive title and not just a clever title for a record it describes the relationship between dave and tim the relationship between um and congratulations to you because i think that your kids your twins were on the way probably last time we we uh, met and now they're in the world your family's yeah expanding. yeah we did we did the session for kick i think maybe they had arrived was that 2019 it doesn't matter yeah but i'm pretty sure it we, was it was they were either just about to yeah. happen or they had already happened yeah 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 mm -hmm. they it's been wonderful man i mean they're they're two and a half now and uh it was funny when when i told our manager alex i said like the i have the title it's a really good title um it's blood harmony and he was like great but but th we got to get the cover art right like it can't be anything metal or i was like no no i'm thinking like a nice forest scene with my children he was like perfect perfect because the, the word blood was in there you know and he was like i we you know it's going to be a very misleading title if anybody thinks it has to do with Slayer or whatever. Yeah, yeah, so um, no cattle skulls anywhere. No, no, exactly. Um, yeah, Blood Harmony is, I guess, the... the um, it's you. People talk about it in studios, like if siblings come in and sing together, and um, it's a certain kind of harmony that, that siblings or, you know, parents and children have when they sing together. But it just felt like a good metaphor for when anybody decides to sing together like we as a species or whatever um that things sound better when you're trying to do them together was was the idea behind the uh the metaphor but yeah that's that we made a lot of that in the uh on the record because we wrote it together and through quarantine through a tough time and uh that effort was a lot of the inspiration for the songs and, and then when we were mixing the record, it, there was a lot of just keep turning Tim up until it's almost too much. <laughs> you know, it's like, yeah. make sure that that harmony is featured. So totally. it was actually really cool, though, too, because the, the way that we recorded the record vocally was different than we've ever done it before because we were just together in the same room like this, singing everything. So it was the first time that really Dave and I were back in the same room after having the longest stretch of not being together in our lifetime with COVID. Yeah. And then we're in the same room recording an album called Blood Harmony and singing at the same time instead of overdubbing. Right. Overdubbing. So it was pretty special and the you know, just in a it was like, you know, kind of taken aback by wow, we haven't done this we have this gift that we are able to do this together and we haven't been able to do it for so long. So to have that recorded is pretty awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. We had, we had um, earlier this week, we had a mother daughter duo and uh, their name is one. The duo is the name of that band, but that mother daughter thing was happening where there's like, there's literally sounds as though there's a third voice happening yeah. there in the room. And that thing very much happens with you guys. So That's it's cool. a total, total pleasure to see it, man. Thank you for bringing it here to, to Jan's enchanted forest. And uh, <laughs> man, there's a lot more, there's a lot more of your music to be shared. What do you feel like doing second today? So this is a song called Gary. Um, for about, I don't know, for about 35 years, this uh, particular experience as a kid uh, was bothering me. We, there was a kid that got bullied in, um, in school, in the school I went to. I went to a, a really small school, so there weren't many, many people in the class. And this kid kind of got, he got the brunt of it. and. Uh, not only did I not step in to do what was right, I, I participated. So, you know, it was interesting over the last couple of years watching this shift culturally about bullying. It's great, you know, to, to, uh, to see it 
sort of be a, a, a thing that people are fighting back against and look like don't bully other people it's a terrible experience but I just as a songwriter I, I thought well what if you were the bully you know there's a reason people bully as well and it's that same kind of hurt that prompts this whole cycle and so we wrote the song and um, I felt great about the song and then realized I was going to be doing pace sessions where you admit to having bullied someone even if it's 35 years ago it's a very awkward admission but you know I mean I think hopefully there's a little bit of healing for for somebody in it and maybe it'll stop I don't know some little bit of that hurt I don't know it's it I'm not exactly sure what songs go on to do but for me I've learned a lot through just being a fan of music and and listening to the perspectives of Joe Strummer or uh, fill in the blank other sort of prophetic singers and so I, I hold a lot of importance on that and hopefully somebody out there might hear it and go I think I might back off on this you know <laughs> might be a nice thing I don't know but anyway this is this is Gary you ready Don't name him Gary Don't name him Gary I knew a Gary in school He tried so hard to be cool But kids can be so cruel When I knew Gary he liked climbing trees, but we were a hive of bees. We stung him mercilessly. Poor little Gary, you could see it when we would sting. He'd spin on a broken wing. Kids say the damnedest things. When I knew Gary, he'd beat on his brother's face under that old staircase just to give him a taste. Hurt people, hurt people, I hope you don't hurt anymore. I'm hoping you kept your heart open like a Christmas Eve soup kitchen door. Hurt people, hurt people, I hope you don't hurt anymore. I hope you don't. I hope you don't hurt anymore Maybe he's married God, it would be such a relief If somebody's showing him love Like we showed him all that grief Yeah, but don't name him Gary I know it's your grandpa's name But kids can be so lame I still feel so ashamed I hope he don't I hope he don't think I'm the same Hurt people Hurt people don't hurt anymore I'm hoping you kept your heart open like a Christmas Eve soup kitchen door and maybe sorry for me now it's like a cup of cold coffee it's bitter and old and a little too late but I'm trying to make right the shit that we put on
I hope you don't hurt I hope you don't hurt anymore Thank you All right. Thank you, man. Thank you for sharing that. Thank you for sharing the words behind it. I mean, I can relate to that also. I mean, I feel like probably most kids did things that they wish they hadn't done younger. I mean, I used to do that. I was fat as shit. I would take kids lunches and it was not fun. You know, it was fun at the time for me, but in retrospect, it's terrible. I mean, that the experience on the other side was, you know, probably yeah, it, devastating it, and traumatic. I mean, that's the weird thing is like, it's, uh, if you're doing it, it's not fun either. You know, it's, uh, you can tell there's something wrong about it at the time. Oh yeah, you yeah. And you're working out differently, some, but you know. Yeah, you're working out something that that is uh, gross, and so I guess you're right. Maybe there is some kind of um, some kind of a common ground that that you can come to by by talking about it. It's just you know you hear songs like the joke or whatever, and you're like, yeah, you're rooting for the underdog. And in this in this situation, you're kind of rooting for the underdog, but you're also admitting that you put the underdog into that unfortunate position. Yeah. So it's a, it's kind of bizarre, but I gotta find a little tuner here. Well, so speaking of Gary, I know that your Gary is very different than the segue I'm making to new Gary. Um, Gary Talent, man, we just we just recorded with him on like Monday or Tuesday. He's with the Delavantes, another uh, Jersey Philly uh, mainstay. But we were in the studio with Gary, and I know that Gary Talent, E Street Band, is uh, is included on the record, as are so many others, new members of Jason Isbell's band, yeah. Cheryl Crows. Like, can you talk about some of those collaborations and the amazing players that are on the record? Yeah, when, when, when the record plans came together, we had the great fortune of being able to work with Will Hogue. Uh, he was interested in producing, and um, initially I was like, I don't know. Uh, I, you know, a lot of times when artists are producers, it, it's great for a minute, but then they lose focus. But it, w within one uh, meeting with, with Will, uh, I guess his, his initial um, interests were being a basketball coach when, when he was younger he wanted to get into basketball coaching and that's what it felt like he sort of approached the entire studio experience that way um, where he was just trying to get the best out of each person and his ego was not in there at all which is rare for an artist you know an artist wants to be heard all the time but Will is tremendous and he orchestrated a lot of this he shared some demos with these players and I mean it was bizarre to me he's like well what if we got Gary Talent to play bass and I was like, that Gary you know, Talent? Like, you mean from Bruce Springsteen's band? He's like, yeah, yeah, he's into it. E Street founding member? Uh, yeah, I think that'll be f great. <laughs> but but as it amassed and there were all these incredible players, um, nerves sort of kicked in because I don't know them and I'm a fan of every one of their bands. And so how you maintain kind of your composure and your dignity as a as a creative and all that stuff when people are clearly better at musicianship than I am you know I, I kind of Tim and I can make it up and hack through it but these guys are really proficient at their at their instruments but I talked to a friend of mine and he was like look just go in there and understand that they had to hear the songs in order to agree to do this and so there there's something about that that is appealing to them enough to do it and so make sure that you stay sort of as in control as you need to be and yield as much to the process as you can. So it's like sort of seemingly incongruent things, but in the end, that was great advice because everybody's ideas were welcome and, uh, and everybody had great ideas. And so I'm glad we stayed open to it, but there also was the vision of the songs and we wanted to obey that. So sort of keeping both of those things true at the same time was was the secret to it but we were just i felt like we got the keys to the millennium falcon or something you know we were like <laughs> we were like all right you can drive this thing and head right for the death star and you can blow it up you know we we're like we can drive you know because everybody was so good at their their instrument and uh everyone was having fun which i mean every nobody wanted the session to end so that was it was great i mean we were just sitting in there like, holy shit, you know, <laughs> did you hear what he just played? So, yeah, I mean, it was sort of the secret of Nashville that most people have come around on already, that this is where most of the best 
players are, certainly with roots music and rock and roll and, and stuff like that. But we, uh, we were blown away and just so happy to be here and felt like, I feel like that energy's in the album. Yeah. Yeah, man, I agree. I'm glad that you guys got to have that experience and also to, I mean, that was very well said on your part, the part about maintain as much control as you need and yield as much as you can. Yeah. It's a very, very, I mean, that's a, a difficult balance to strike, but you're an empathetic and intuitive person and sort of figured it out. And that's, that's cool to be able to, to be able to strike that balance and make it work for everybody, take everybody's needs into consideration for the benefit of the project. Well, therapy every week, being married to a therapist, sobriety, yeah. you know, that's the only way any of that would be possible. Uh, Cause left to my own devices, it, it, that's not that wasn't always true as a younger man. But you hope to grow and and hope to take advantage of good opportunities and and realize too that it's not really about you. Even the songwriting is like there's a certain magic to it, and and you're but you're sort of at the river, hoping to pull a fish out. You know, it doesn't have that much to do with you. Yeah, you got the rope and you put the worm on there, or whatever the analogy would be, but the yeah. end of the day they either swim up to you or they don't and i think like trying to to look at life more like that than squeezing it especially after pandemic you know there's there's so little we can control so it's it's good to be able to pivot i think yeah definitely well man thank you guys for sharing your music with us here and there's still a lot more do you feel like doing something off of blood harmony next or are we going to do the the brand brand new next what do you think let's do one more off of blood harmony while we're on topic um this one was the first song we wrote um during the pandemic i was just kicking ideas around and my friend heather morgan is a songwriter here in Nashville and we became friends years ago and I threw this idea at her and she was really positive on it. She was like, this is a great idea, you should keep going. And I was like, what about this idea, dear Lord, I need a surfboard. And she was clapping on the Zoom, you know, like that's, that's a good idea. So we kind of got it into shape and then Tim and I finished the song. And so it was the first finished idea for the record and I just thought, you know, I have the long, uh, complicated history with with religion we were raised um, in an evangelical Christian home and so most of my early life was pushing back against that but you have children and brushes with death and and uh, you know lose people and you're suddenly like at least aware that that possibility of a God is there and I just thought it was funny that I've only I only ever really reach out to this idea of God when I need something and I thought, like, well, God's probably like, come on, man, what the hell? You know, you're only ever asking me for shit. And uh, it just seemed like an interesting um, idea, you know, a premise to start a song from. Um, so, yeah, this song's called Surfboard. And, and let's see if we can, let me see if I can do a little better job of getting this thing into tune. Yeah, let me use that one. because it's and just the moment it's in tune also, that shadow is about to cross over and your guitar is about to change temperature by about 20 ah, degrees. <laughs> yes. Tuning that, always that. should that. make for a good chorus then. <laughs> right, it'll be in tune by the time we get to the chorus. Uh, let's see, what else could we say? That, oh, this mandolin I just bought from Philadelphia's finest new music store, Russo's Music. I'm thrilled. Of course, our dad thought it was Rizzo music because he's a Philadelphian who knows the mayor, Frank Rizzo. So yeah. he's calling it Rizzo, so it's going to be hard for us to keep calling it the proper name after this, this Rizzo's uh, revelation. <laughs> <laughs> What's a place called, Rizzo's? No, Dad, Ru Russo, Russo's. Of course, we bought that on the way to our show with the Avid Brothers. We got to play in Philadelphia with them the other night. But we were a little too chicken to break it out because we had never played it. We were, gonna, we were like, let's just play it on the stage. I was like, uh, never even played the damn thing. Just kind of a pass to get you into this uh, arena. So It's true. You need, you need mandolin. It's true. They let us play because we had that item. Right. <laughs> what, uh, is that thing in tune? There's way more strings on that than this. I believe so. All right, here's Surfboard. <laughs> I 
I've been finding myself afraid Have you seen the shape I'm in? I've been cleaning up my act after a weekend's worth of sin This past year I got let go and then the rent got hard to pay So I'm finding myself kneeling down to pray I keep them clear and small Little prayers that won't hurt at all and clear and small Whisper the words flow through the wall Like, dear Lord, I need a surfboard Cause I can't figure out how to not drown in these waves Dear Lord, I saw your billboard About hell and fire and how I need to be saved So I'm praying straight away On Sunday mornings we're sleeping in We're fried from treading water in this pool we threw us in Waiting for a lesson on how to swim I keep them clear and small Little prayers that won't hurt at all Clear and small Whisper words go through the walls again dude play it 15 more times <laughs> our next load ins not until four o'clock so yeah you got an hour and five minutes if you want um we uh so there's there's a lot of chances for you like you were saying you're out with the avits um you have been been busy being out in the world which is amazing because we finally can kind of do that again you're playing mercy tomorrow night here in nashville yeah a ton of shows between now and november 13th which wraps up in garwood new jersey and then a lot of international dates also yes um what are the uh, are there any that you are i would imagine there's a lot of places you're excited to go but any in particular where you're really looking forward to reconnecting with people fans family food like anything about any particular city that you're really really looking forward to between now and the end of the international tour 2022 well, i mean to be honest that there's a manic energy to all of it that is a little spooky because um you know I, I, to go back to work safely it would be smart to put certain uh rules into place you know like to close off the backstage afterwards we're talking about these kinds of things like how do we do it safely which don't sound like fun because I'm so eager to just be back in the world you know I, as much as it was great to be around my kids for that long and my wife for that long and sort of watch them turn from one to almost three I love doing this I love getting into town and having dinner with old friends and new friends and um yeah it's I'm excited for all of it I just want to do it safely and and um it's interesting because I think I don't know if it's I'm a little bit older or 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 uh, the pandemic or whatever, but 
it's a great time to be a booking agent or a manager because ordinarily if a show doesn't go well you know in, in our past life you might get done a pretty good show and be like oh damn it you know there weren't enough people or or um there was this or you might have a complaint of some kind but I don't really have any complaints. I'm just so excited. Like we played a record store in DC the other night and it was small, limited capacity for, for COVID, but we hadn't seen our sister and, and we, she came along, you know, she, she left her kids um, at home with the babysitter and, and came and hung with us. And I just was so focused on playing for her and so excited that she was there that all of the other like show stuff, all the other professional stuff didn't matter. So, um, yeah, I think for me, I'm just so excited and feel so fortunate to get to do it in any capacity. So to have so many of the upcoming things look like they're either going to be full or, 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 you know, new opportunities coming up. It's, it just feels like a great time to, to be alive and, and, to have made it through and, and then also to have like new music that we're excited about it's it's pretty great so i'm looking forward to that's a roundabout way of saying i'm looking forward to all of it in, in nice yeah in man, we are too this is uh, it was a, a mixed blessing to have the new york studio closed down it doesn't exist anymore the atlanta studio doesn't exist for pace so we're right on the road setting this thing up and meeting a lot of new people and it's you know it's a tremendous amount of work to set them up and set them up safely outdoors and all this, this stuff is awesome and, man you know but once it's underway it's incredible man this is just couldn't be better yeah well that i mean i also think that necessity becomes the mother of invention or whatever the term is you know it's like you could have your studio shut down and and then quit and and go do something else if 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 you want or you figure out a way by hook or by crook to kind of keep being creative and and keep putting that energy into the world and i think that there's something to that that's so life-giving and especially when we haven't been able to be around it it's just great i mean you probably as much work as this is you probably feel so accomplished in getting all this set up. We're in this cool forest. You would have never done this in New York City. Yeah. Um, so right on cue. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, cicadas. For yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. This is great. So are we we're doing the the brand new one, right? Yeah. Do you want to switch yeah, seats so I can hear better? Or yeah, let's... yeah. We wrote so we wrote like thirty songs this year, and um, how do you do this? Just press that white one. Press the white press, one. press the white switch. So, <laughs> well, there's like three white ones on here, but. All or right. you, I think you know the. the I know one. how to do it. Um, we wrote about 30 songs and enough for Blood Harmony and a couple more that we recorded that we're, we're figuring out what we're going to do with those extras. And then we're going to make a record of Tim's songs where, where most of the germ of the idea was, was his. Um, we're going to do that next. So Tim's debut album will come out on our record label next year, hopefully, if all goes according to plan. And uh, so I wanted to play this one also. It's also it's pretty topical. It's kind of tied in with what we're talking about and feeling. But I'm, I haven't played an electric guitar in front of anyone other than my kids in like, <laughs> I don't know how long. So let's see how this goes. You want to say so many words about your beautiful song? Um, not really. You don't? <laughs> I'm just happy to play it. I'm happy to be playing again. And I want to say, you know, like that studio in New York was so was cool and vibey and, and pretty magical. But you have definitely been able to capture that outside of that place so yeah it's pretty it's pretty awesome we're happy to be doing this and happy Thank to you. be here man thanks for having us this is great this song's called when all of this is over is over 
We're heading down the shore We'll get the bikes out on the boardwalk And raid the vintage store When all of this is over And we're done heading for the hills We'll get a jug of margaritas Salt my glass and drink my fill When all of this is over Are we left with just the core? In a field of four-leaf clovers Wishing for a little more When all of this is over Will I get to see my friends? If it looks like the back of my eyelids All of this is over Are we left with just the core? In a field of four-leaf clovers Wishing for a little more like the back of my eyelids I want what came before When all of this is over Are we left with just the core? In a field of four-leaf clovers Wishing for a little more in a field of four-leaf clovers Wishing for just a little more Thanks, guys. Thanks a lot for having us, man. Thanks for letting us play a brand new song that we barely even know. Yeah. <laughs> it's fun to do it though. It is fun to do it. <laughs> it's fun to hear it, man. It sounds great from where we're sitting, and um, I cannot wait to watch the, listen to the broadcast because what Juan is doing over there that the internet is hearing is even that much more delightful. So thank you guys for sharing the music today, cool. and uh, best of luck on Blood Harmony. It comes out on on uh, October twenty first. It's in pre order right 22nd. now. Yeah, twenty second. Okay, I October. Think. Yeah. My internet says twenty first. But, Your internet. Oh, you got a different internet? Uh, yeah, the one that I built says 21. <laughs> the one that Al Gore built says maybe something different. I think I the know. Al Gore one says 22. We'll leave We'll leave the accurate information <laughs> in the comment section afterwards once yeah. we've both had a People chance to consult it our It's on Al Gore internets. and Brad's internet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, man, we'll travel safely between all the dates, and uh, let's just keep doing this, man. We'll see you when we see you next in a year or something, and, um, and thank you for sharing the music.